What's going on, family? This is Scrap of Box, the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to talk about Maxwell Antonio Loach. He was born August 8, 1954, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He stood 5 foot 11 and weighed 175 pounds. He had a 75 inch reach and had total bouts of 68, 49 wins, 35 knockouts, 16 losses, with three draws. Now, the thing with Maxwell Antonio Loach, he had lost his mom when he was an infant. And at the age of five, his aunt had his older brother take him to Benjamin Parkway in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, and told his brother, when you take him there, don't come back with him, because I cannot afford both of you. It's either you or him, and I can only take care of one. So his older brother, the very next day, would take him to Benjamin Parkway, in Philadelphia. And like most little kids, Maxwell Antonio Lowe's thought he was going to the park just to play. And they would play red light, red light, one, two, three. And when he turned around, his brother was not there. He was left at Benjamin Parkway all alone. Fortunately for Maxwell Antonio Loach, a good Samaritan would find him and take him over to Catholic Social Services. He was then given the name Matthew Franklin after Benjamin Franklin Parkway, the street where he was found. And he was finally adopted by a stable home and cared for after being switched from home to home in the foster care system. And as he got a little older, he would find a boxing gym and become an amateur boxer. And after 20 fights in the amateurs, he would turn pro in 1974. 1976, he would face... Marvin Campbell, future light heavyweight champion. 1977, he returned Matthew Saad Muhammad. And he would lose to another future Muslim light heavyweight champion, Eddie Gregory, would then turn Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. But then he would defeat Marvin Johnson, three-time light heavyweight champion. And Matthew Saad Muhammad's life would change. I'll tell you, that fight was a war. And they would have several fights, and each fight was a classic. Marvin Johnson was a throwback of the old days. He had a lot of heart, a lot of courage. Never quit. Just when you thought he was out, he would come back. He had a brother who would be the trainer of the 1988 Olympic team. Marvin Johnson was some fighter. But Matthew Saad Muhammad, as he would now be called, would be involved in one of the greatest light heavyweight championship fight series in the entire history of the game with Jackie Lopez. Jackie Lopez was a fantastic fighter himself. He didn't have great technique, but he was what he was. He was a fighter. And these two men would go back and forth, exchanging vicious blows. At one point in time, Yaki Lopez would have Matthew Saad Muhammad up against the ropes and hit him with 20 unanswered punches. And Saad Muhammad would come back and drop Yaki Lopez five times. And eventually he would knock him out in the 14th round. This was some fight. And after several fights, he would fight fighters such as Uriah Grant, 
Jerry Martin, Murray Simon, and he would eventually run into Muhammad Kawi, Dwight Braxton, and he would lose his title. His luck would run out. One of the fighters that I would have loved to have seen him fight, but it never happened. Michael Spinks. They never fought. I don't know why. But after Maki Shah Muhammad would lose to Dwight Braxton, Muhammad Kawi, Michael Spinks would then face Muhammad Kawi, defeat him, and become the unified light heavyweight champion of the world. But he never faced Matthew Saad Muhammad. Very interesting. Matthew Saad Muhammad would eventually be found in a shelter. He would be homeless. But he was a very hard puncher. In fact, he was listed number 24 in the top 100 greatest and hardest punches in boxing history in the infamous Ring Magazine. Phenomenal puncher with Matthew Saad Muhammad. I wish no one to have the childhood that Matthew Saad Muhammad at the age of five left in an unfamiliar place, Benjamin Parkway in Philadelphia. But he made something of himself and became light heavyweight champion of the world. He would eventually die on May 25th, 2014. And I must salute to Matthew Saad Muhammad. He was an outstanding light heavyweight champion. Wars with Marvin Johnson and Jackie Lopez. Fort Uriah Grant. Was in there with Murray Sunderman. Mike the Jewish Bomber, Rossman. Fantastic fighter. With Matthew Saad Muhammad. And at his funeral, he was accompanied and respected by former world champion and former Philadelphians. Fighters such as Tim Witherspoon, Mike the Jewish Bomber Rossman, Buster Drayton, Nate Mr. Miller, Bobby Boogaloo Watts, Earl the Pearl Hargrove, Curtis Parker, Tyrone the Butterfly Crawley, Myron Taylor, he's the older brother of Meldrick Taylor, Mark Goodwin, Richard Mandel, Kevin Special K. Kelly, Tony Green, Mike Evans, Bruce Blair, Jacqueline Fraser Line, very special person with Matthew Saad Muhammad. Well respected in the community. The fights he put on earned him that. So I must salute Matthew Saad Muhammad, one of the greatest light heavyweight champions of all time. Melvin TNT Taylor told me plenty of times about Matthew Saad Muhammad. He was his idol. He admired Matthew Saad Muhammad. In fact, he told me he was his top five greatest fighter in his eyes. Meldrick Taylor held the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship strap from Buddy McGurk in Atlantic City. I was at that particular fight. At the age of 17, he would win a gold medal in 1984 in the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. At the age of 15, he would win a Nationals. A brilliant fighter was Meldrick Taylor. And Matthew Saad Muhammad was his idol.
fascinating story of Matthew Saad Muhammad. I was at the fight with Matthew Saad Muhammad and John Kotek in Atlantic City. That was an outstanding 15 round bout. I spoke to Matthew Saad Muhammad several times. He was a very, very nice person. Always kid around with me. Salute to Matthew Saad Muhammad. Salute to my subscribers. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Salute to Matthew Saad Muhammad.